Welcome to this explainer. In the official story of the Charlie Kirk shooting, the case is completely closed. But what if I told you a deep dive forensic analysis says the story we were told might be, well, physically impossible? The official report points the finger at a lone gunman. But one analyst is making the case that the laws of physics themselves point to a very, very different conclusion. So let's dig in and see exactly why. Okay, so first things first, let's quickly go over the official story. You know, the accepted version of events as presented by the authorities. The official narrative is pretty straightforward. A suspect, Tyler Robinson, was on a rooftop with a powerful 306 rifle. From there, he fired a single, fatal shot. Case closed. So, the analyst starts by mapping out the scene's geometry. We're talking about a shot from about 140 yards away at a pretty shallow 10 degree downward angle and 10 degrees from the side. Now, I want you to remember that, the 10 and 10 angle. It's gonna be really important. And this, right here, is where the whole thing starts to get really weird. A bullet from a high-powered rifle like a 30 6 has a crazy amount of penetrating power. So the question is, why on earth was it found inside the victim's body? To get to the bottom of this, the analyst goes back to basics, the simple, undeniable physics of the shot. If you follow that official 10 in 10 angle, the bullet would have traveled through only about five or six inches of soft neck tissue. And I mean, any ballistics expert will tell you, a round like that should have gone straight through, no question. And that's because a standard 30.6 round is carrying a massive amount of kinetic energy. We're talking around 2,000 foot-pounds. To give you an idea of what that means, picture a one-ton block, like a small car, being dropped from a foot high. Now imagine all of that force, all of it, concentrated onto the tiny tip of a bullet. That's what we're talking about. So, how can we actually see this incredible energy transfer in action? Well, investigators use something called ballistic gel. It's this special substance that's designed to mimic human tissue perfectly, so they can see exactly what a bullet does when it hits a body. And when a 30 out 6 round hits this gel, it doesn't just, you know, poke a clean hole through it. It creates this enormous shockwave, this temporary cavity, and it just keeps going, penetrating for nearly 20 inches. So the analyst argues a 6-inch path of soft tissue, there's just no way it should have been able to stop it. Which, of course, brings us right back to that central, nagging question. If the physics are crystal clear that the bullet should have exited the body, why was this one recovered from inside? The analyst believes the answer is hiding in plain sight, literally in a single frame of video that was captured at the exact moment of impact. What a key piece of footage shows is something that looks for all the world like an explosion underneath the victim's shirt, sending this visible shock wave rippling outward. It's, it's pretty dramatic. Now, this visible shock wave has a technical name. It's called a cavitation event. It's this telltale sign that a massive amount of energy is being dumped into the body all at once, forcing tissue outward faster than the eye can even register. And you have to remember, this entire event happens in less than 1 30th of a second. It's a blink and you miss it moment. The key takeaway here is that this isn't an explosion from something outside the body. It's a massive overpressure event happening inside it. And that is the aha moment. It explains everything. The reason the bullet didn't exit is because it couldn't. It had to expend all, and I mean all, of its 2,000 foot-pounds of energy to create that incredible internal shockwave. But hang on. For a bullet to dump all of its energy like that, it couldn't have just zipped through soft tissue. The analysis concludes it had to have hit something hard. Really hard. To stop a bullet this powerful dead in its tracks, you need to hit bone, specifically something as solid as the spinal column. But here's the big problem. The official 10 and 10 trajectory, it would miss the spine completely. It just doesn't line up. So this forces the analyst to work backwards, to calculate a completely new trajectory that would actually hit the spine. And instead of 10 and 10, the physics demand a shot that's 20 degrees down and 43 degrees off axis. We're talking a much steeper angle from much farther to the side. And boom, there it is. That's the absolute core of this entire analysis. This new trajectory is the only one that actually aligns with the physical evidence. It provides a direct path to the spine, which would stop the bullet and create that exact cavitation event we see on the video. You'd think that would be enough, right? But the analysis doesn't stop there. 
It also dives into some really serious issues with the official video evidence of the suspect himself. Okay, so get this. The video of the shooter released by the FBI, it has some pretty glaring problems. For one, it starts after the shot is fired. Then you've got things the analyst calls crude digital edits, like the suspect's shadow just vanishing when he runs over a white part of the roof, and a pedestrian in the background who literally disappears from the frame. So these aren't just, you know, random glitches from a bad camera. The analyst concludes, and this is a big deal, that the key video evidence in this case was almost certainly manipulated on purpose. And all of this leaves us with one final and pretty uncomfortable question. When the official story we're told and the hard laws of physics collide, which one deserves a closer look? 